Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio. Featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From brand new audiobooks such as Thrawn Treason and the audiobook exclusive Dooku Jedi Lost to our blockbuster movie tie-in editions, you'll have plenty to keep you entertained. Start listening wherever audiobooks are sold. This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi, show number 291. We are your spoiler-free place for Star Wars discussion, analysis, and rhetoric. I'm your host, Dan Z, drinking One Nation coffee out of my Celebration Orlando black and red mug. It's got the 40th anniversary logo on the back. It is a gorgeous mug and I absolutely love it. Be sure to follow CWK on Instagram and check out my collection of Star Wars mugs whenever you get the chance. Coffee with Kenobi is brought to you by MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. For all of your travel needs to the Disney theme parks, the cruise lines, or anywhere you want to go on vacation like, oh, I don't know, Galaxy's Edge and Disneyland and Walt Disney World, be sure to go to our affiliate link which can be found on our show notes, on the front of our webpage, or on social media and sign up for a free, no obligation quote. We are also brought to you by One Nation Coffee, the official brew of coffee with Kenobi. For the best coffee in the galaxy, go to www.onenationcoffee.com and sign up for a subscription service so you never miss out on the best coffee in the galaxy. On today's show, author Jeffrey Brown discusses his upcoming book, Ray and Pals. Jeffrey is the author and illustrator of the massively popular Darth Vader and Son. You will not want to miss this one. So pull up a chair, grab your favorite coffee mug, and let's have some coffee with Kenobi. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. Joining me today for a cup of coffee, he is a very famous author, the Eisner Award-winning artist and author of the Darth Vader and Son series, a lifelong Star Wars fan, and of course, something near and dear to my heart, he lives in the Chicago area. I am talking about Jeffrey Brown. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. Good. Great to have you back on Coffee with Kenobi. We were talking before we started recording, and you last time you were on was 2014, so I'm glad we have you back on the show. Yeah, it's good to be back. It feels like it's been a while, but also like I feel like I never really left the Star Wars world. <laughs> right. So, uh, what does the yeah. Grateful Dead say? A long, long time to be gone, but a short time to be there? Something yeah. like that. Yeah, there you go. So the the new book coming out August 20th, just a a few days uh, from now, is Ray and Pals. We were fortunate enough to get an advanced copy of this. My son Mace and I have poured over it numerous times. What an absolute treat it is. You certainly have not missed a beat. Tell us about the creation of Ray and Pals. Yeah, so it was it was a little different than than the first few Vader books. Um the first big difference, of course, is that I was working from just the two new movies, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, and so not nearly as much material to draw on. Um, and then it was also because I'd been kind of away from the style of the book for a while, that like my initial ideas all seemed to be just a slightly different type of humor. Like there were just there was lots of Star Wars jokes, but missing some of the, the kind of the meaning and feeling that, that um, I tried to get with the, especially with the Vader books. And those were easier because you're dealing with like parents and kids and it's, it's instantly personal. And so, um, you know, there's a little bit with, with Kylo and, and his parents, but it was maybe a little harder to get back to that sweet spot for, for Ray and pals. Right. Well, I mean, that I think that's part of the fun because the both prequel films, of course, have some light moments, but they're very heavy. Uh, they're much more serious. So you've taken and I'm not going to spoil anything for anyone. I'll just use some of the images that are on Amazon.com for people to look at until they buy the book, of course. But you've you've put so much charm in into this atmospheric world. I mean, as I said, there it's a heavy experience. Uh, what are some of your uh, favorite pieces that you did for this one? I mean, I you know one of my favorites is when when Ray. Well, should I look at the ones that are on Amazon too? Um, <laughs> I might spoil it. I mean, there's a, there's a joke with 
with Ray and Chewie showing up at, at Luke's yes. um, little hut and, and he's telling them to go away, but they brought donuts. And I think that's one of my favorites. It's one of those where, you know, we don't really put in real world references too much, but like sometimes they, they just fit in just right. And so um, that like, and it was, kind of fun to draw that hut <laughs> of the stones. Um, I sure. mean, the, the Achito has some really interesting scenery. Um, another, another difference with this book is that there's some two page spreads. And yes. so I got to um, really, you know, like just in terms of the act of drawing, really get into to it in a different way. And there's, one of the spreads, of course, is with Maz's castle, and drawing all those aliens was just was just a lot of fun. So that that's actually brings up a good question. I was thinking about so when you when you're watching a new Star Wars movie, and we, you know, of course, we're so blessed we're able to have so many more new Star Wars movies. Are there ever certain moments or lines that you hear? I mean, we mentioned that that great uh, cookie page. Uh, are there ever moments that or lines that show up where you think? Ooh, I can use this someday. Um, well, so that was one of the things that one of the reasons that I, I kind of stepped back from doing Star Wars books. I had done, you know, seven Star Wars books in four years, yeah. which was great. But I was like, you know, I I love Star Wars. I wanna I wanna like I don't want it to become my job. I, I do wanna stay like a fan. And sure. so I had stepped away and got to see the new movies just as a fan. And I wasn't thinking about turning them into books at all. And um, so as a, as a movie going experience, that was much better for me. And I think in the end that actually helped the books because I, I watched the movies a bunch before, like I even came back around to thinking, you know what? I, I would like to, to draw Ray and BB eight a bunch. Um, and so I didn't really didn't really have that uh, with the movies. Now, the question is, is what will happen, you know, this December? Right. What, what will I be thinking? <laughs> it might be a little harder to to not think a, think like that. Right. Well, so so, but clearly though, I mean, and I, you know, what I that was one of the cool things about when George Lucas sold the company to Disney. He said, you know, I'm going to be seeing these movies for the first time without knowing anything about them, which is kind of yeah. mind blowing. But you're right. I mean, when I first was an educator, there were years when I didn't read for fun because I'm an English teacher and I just, right. that was what I did for my job. So there is that fine line. But then you get that nice break, you get recharged. So you have to go back into these films to do research once you know, hey, I've seen this as a fan. I got to experience it with my family. But now I'm going to get back into the well. I'm going to do some drawing. Uh, are there certain scenes once you go back and do the research where you think, Oh, I want to draw that scene or is it more of a kind of a character or a moment thing? It's, it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, like they're, I mean, just BB eight is fun to draw. So like, you know, like anytime BB eight's on the screen, I'm thinking like, you know, when I'm drawing the book, I'm thinking about ways to include him. Um, and obviously, like Maz's castle, like was another scene, like say, just like the cantina from from A New Hope. You know, it's one of those things you see. Like that would just be fun to draw all those different characters. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think there's there's lots of scenes. I I really wanted to draw um, the the scene with Ray and Kylo battling in the in the Last Jedi and then teaming up. Um, yes. and so that was, a, that was one where, you know, like drawing the Praetorian guards was definitely something that like just seeing them was like, oh, that'd be fun to draw. There's, yeah, there's so much detail and they, they hearken back to the Emperor's Royal Guard, but then they've got that modern flourish. Uh, and I will say too, uh, both because a lot of what your, your stuff is clear that you're a parent and as a father myself, I, there are sometimes certain things that you have, like they're not necessarily Easter eggs, but they're just certain things that I think parents will really understand. Um, they're just really, really charming. Obviously, anytime you get to draw a porg, you're you're winning at life. 
Um, <laughs> but one of the ones I really liked was uh, your spin on Finn's uh, back to suit that he wears and how that translates into summer fun for the gang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was another one. Um, you know, just like when I, when I knew I was going to do this book and then rewatching the movies, I was like, I got to find a way to draw Finn's suit shooting <laughs> water everywhere. Like, I think that was just such a, like a fun visual moment. And yeah. So f- like was glad that I was able to find like just the right way to, to fit that in. Oh, it's great. And you, and even like where t- it's like a sort of situational irony. Sometimes you're still able to capture the essence of these characters, but from a, a playful kind of childlike point of view. And I think that's important for Star Wars because when we fell in love with this galaxy far, far away, we were kids ourselves. So the fact that you're able to take that and put it into these books, I think is wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, you know, that's like, where's the, uh, Vader and Son and Vader's Little Princess both definitely had this this kind of parent child dynamic. This book um, became much more about the friendships and especially like Ray and Finn and Finn and Poe. Like another favorite of mine is is there's a there's a whole joke about you know Finn borrowing Poe's jacket and <laughs> and you know just like you know showing those those relationships that. Um, when you're a kid, like you have friends and you borrow things and like, um, I don't know. It's, yeah, I was definitely trying to, um, portray that through the, through the star Wars lens. Well, and you certainly hit a home run here. I mean, and that's, that's kind of the fun because star Wars obviously is a, is a fictional universe, but there are certain elements of any good mythology that we can relate to. So to take some fun and have some fun with it is great. And now this is probably kind of a um, a tricky question because I'm sure it's just sort of an organic process and you don't necessarily have a hierarchy, but is it more fun to come up with the concepts or just get a chance to draw and create them? Um, I think for, for the most part, just drawing is actually a little more fun. Um, this one, like the other, the other reason this one was hard with coming up with the concepts was, I don't know what's going to happen in, in the rise of Skywalker. Like, right. so I don't know all the relationships. And so it was, it was kind of interesting. Um, you know, I, I would include jokes that, you know, maybe indicated a relationship would go this way or that way. And without being too, you know, specific. And then the response would be, you know, like, Oh yeah, we did, this one doesn't work for us. And, but they wouldn't tell me why like Lucasfilm wouldn't say, you know, oh, wow. so, and, and it wasn't, so I, you know, I was trying to like, but is it because like there's Ray and Ray and Finn are going to, something's going to happen or is it because something's not going to happen with them, you know, right. or, or Finn having, like I had the joke about Finn having a crush on Rose and, or Rose having a crush on Finn. I mean, and um, so, so that was, that made the, the idea process for, for this book was definitely harder. And like I said, like having just the two movies to draw from uh, material from um, made it more difficult. And also I I guess this book being all new characters. So like all things that I, I hadn't drawn before and, like I still like drawing Darth Vader, but I've drawn him so many times and like coloring yeah. and, you know, like he's always just like this, I mean, coloring wise, it's, it's, I color him a dark gray, but you know, just coloring this, this character black all over and over and over again, just the cape, the helmet. And so it becomes repetitive. So getting to draw like all new characters and, and things is, was, was great. Like drawing the Voltex was, yeah. was also a lot of fun. You know, that's something I, you, you saying that, and it just kind of triggered a response to me. You're, you know what? This book is a lot brighter. And maybe it's just because of the different, uh, different colors uh, and dynamics yeah. of the characters, but it does kind of pop a little bit more now that you mentioned that. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the Death Star and the Star Destroyers, there's a lot of gray on the walls and, and here, you know, like most of the time they're on spaceships there, it's, it's, we're working with white walls and, and, 
you know, Achito is certainly a colorful island, and so yeah, there's lots of green. I think maybe a little more than than before, except when I was drawing Ewoks. <laughs> Why don't we go ahead and take a quick break and we'll be back with much more from Jeffrey Brown. This is Coffee with Kenobi. This is Vanessa Marshall and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio. Featuring sound effects, top-notch narrators, and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From Luke Skywalker to Kylo Ren to Admiral Akbar, you'll recognize all of your favorite characters. Listen to movie tie-ins like The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens, and original titles such as Thrawn Treason, Alphabet Squadron, Master and Apprentice, and the audiobook exclusive Dooku Jedi Lost. With Star Wars audiobooks, you'll have plenty of Star Wars listening to keep you entertained. Available wherever audiobooks are sold. MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is the way to go. To organize your trip to Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland and Walt Disney World, they have signature service and expert advice to help clients maximize their vacation time and dollar. And the best part is it's a no-cost, no-obligation quote when you use the service, and they also proactively adjust the booking if the rate goes down. They will help your family enjoy everything the Disney theme parks and the cruise lines have to offer, help plan every detail, and will share invaluable tips. And not just for Galaxy's Edge, but literally anywhere in Walt Disney World, Disneyland, the cruise lines, or anywhere you want to go on vacation. They really are wonderful. Be sure to go to our affiliate link, which can be found in the show notes, on the front of our webpage, or on social media, and sign up for a free, no-obligation quote. One of the best parts about Coffee with Kenobi is our wonderful Coffee with Kenobi Patreon family contributors. And I'm talking about wonderful folks like Jason Hall, Dennis Keithley, Colby Mead, Yancey Evans, Dave Ritchie, Ross Halibin, Frank Mulder, Alexander Moylan, Melinda Wolf, Aaron Harris, Chris Kavarka, Angela Sauce, Rebecca Raven, Simbot, Deptradarian, Christine Turk, Sean Reed, Kurt McKellen, Dan Ream, Brian Harding, Blake Weaver, Jim Capron, Caroline Maselli, Chris Metz, LJ Souter, Thea Selby, Jeff Ellis, Daz Davies, Christian Dale, Brian McKinney, Connie Shee, Jared Cantor, BJ Smith, Eric Struthers, Nick Deco, and Mark Suter. 10% of your contributions to Coffee with Kenobi's Patreon page go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital Network to help out these amazing children and their families. Look, when you go to St. Jude, you don't have to pay anything because there's so much that these kids have to overcome and to fight through and their families, and they need all the help they can get, which is why St. Jude is such a wonderful place to be. So 10% of your contributions to Coffee with Kenobi's Patreon page go directly to helping them out. And it's really amazing. You bless them in so many ways and you bless us with your contributions because of the equipment costs, the travel, the production of the show, the time away from my family. You make it all worthwhile and I can't thank you enough. But you get, for $5 a month, you get Coffee with Kenobi's amazing exclusive podcast, CWK Prover, hosted by myself, Tom Gross, and Corey Club, where we look at the latest in popular culture, give you behind the scenes of our lives, producing the show, and of course, plenty of Star Wars conversation. And for $10 or more a month, and this is really going to be handy when the D23 Expo happens in a couple of weeks, you're going to get access to video and photos not seen anywhere else with exclusive commentary directly from me immediately when it happens. So if you have any questions or you want to find out more about Coffee with Kenobi's Patreon page, go to www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi. Thank you so much. Well, what is it do you think about Star Wars that that is so rich for so many different kind of perspectives and takes on the story? I mean, I think there's just there's just something for everyone. I mean, like just if you just look at the the characters and people have you know some people like Kylo, they like this this dark, brooding, like conflicted character who thinks he wants to do something good, but he's really not doing good at all and then you have like like ray who's this you know this like powerful independent woman who you know even though she doesn't really you know know everything she needs to know to get by like she still manages to to get by and and helps people and believes in herself you know um i don't know i think there's just there's all these different characters that 
that we can relate to or aspire to or we see in our lives in different ways. And then it's just, but we get to see them, you know, swinging around lightsabers and, and hanging out with robots and aliens. Right. Not, not a bad way to spend a day. Yeah. So you, uh, obviously, you know, I mentioned you were, you're a Chicago guy. Uh, where, how was Celebration Chicago for you? I, I saw you from afar. You're on, of course, <laughs> the, the main Star uh, Star Wars show stage. So hard to get to. What is that experience like for you? I mean, you're, you're in your office or in your home drawing, creating these books. And, and all of a sudden now you're in front of some, uh, one of the biggest crowds of Star Wars fans ever assembled. Yeah, it's, it's a little surreal. I mean, the, you know, I've been, I've, I've done San Diego Comic-Con for, I think this year was my 16th year of that. And, and I watched that grow and there's always a lot of Star Wars stuff there. And, and, then I, you go to celebration though, and it's just it's like, it's such a different feel. And, um, I don't know. It's, it's weird to like, cause you know, like I look at the people that are on the stage and things they're doing like the, I think the, the, before I went up, um, I was a couple of prop makers who had like, you know, a Boba Fett helmet and they I think they had a tie fighter and, you know, I'm, you know, sitting backstage before they went on, like looking at these models that they made that are, you know, it's like, like something that Lucasfilm would have used in the movie. And, um, it's just, I don't know. I love celebration. I was, I was so happy that it came back to Chicago. Um, because one, I, I knew I'd get to go. And also it was just a short train ride for me. So (laughs) nothing wrong with that. No, that I think, I mean, it was just a quick car ride for me too. So it was, that was great. It was so much fun. It's it's always so much fun to really experience um, the passion, the love you put in these incredible books. Ray and Pals comes out August 20th, 2019. It is fantastic. It's fun. It's the magic you've come to expect from Jeffrey Brown. But with the new characters, it just kind of brings kind of a new vibrancy to this franchise that you've created. Thank you so much for yeah. uh, what you've done for, for Star Wars fans, especially families, because it's, it's really a, a, a sincere treat to experience them. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I would say thank you to everyone because, you know, it, it was my childhood dream to draw, Star, one of my childhood dreams to draw Star Wars and, like, to get to do it and then have it, you know, be so well received is, you know, it's just something that, yeah, I'm so grateful for to, like, be able to do it. Oh, it's great. Everyone loves it, obviously. Where can people reach out to you, Jeffrey, if they want to ask you a question or just say hello? Um, yeah, you, there's a, uh, you can message me through my website, jeffreybrowncomics.com, um, and, and you can send me a message there. Or uh, I, my P.O. box is, I think, listed in, in pretty much every book, so you can always write me. I still like getting physical mail, and I still write back physical mail, so... That's Either great. one of those is great. That's so much fun. Hey, Jeffrey, thank you so much for coming back to Coffee with Kenobi. Yeah, thank you so much for having me again. Listening to Coffee with Kenobi, you are the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> Before we close out this week's show, I want to thank our CWK sponsors. Penguin Random House Audio, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel, and One Nation Coffee. Please support them the way they support our podcast. And remember to listen to new and archived shows of Coffee with Kenobi wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, YouTube, where you can find the audio as well as some occasional videos, or our website, www.coffeewithkenobi.com, or wherever you enjoy listening to your favorite shows. If you listen to the show through iTunes, please leave us a review. You can also find us on social media apps such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest, and we'd love for you to check us out there. And honestly, if everyone who listened to this show and downloaded it would follow us on any of those social media places, our social media would explode. We would love it. You would help us out so much with just a click of a button. And be sure to listen to our CWK family of shows too, including Legends Library, Resistance Reactions, Comics with Kenobi, and Lattes with Leia. Please leave a review for each of their shows as well, and be sure to subscribe to each of them individually on their own respective feeds. In addition to the places I just mentioned for Coffee with Kenobi, you can find me twice a month on the podcast Looking at Lucasfilm, 
part of the Jim Hill Media Podcast Network, as well as on Twitter at Mr. Zare, M-R-Z-E-H-R. And you can find my writing on CWK's website, as well as StarWars.com, where I'm an official blogger there, and on IGN, where I contribute articles on Star Wars, as well as some other topics. Don't forget to check out www.patreon.com slash coffee with Kenobi to help support this show, as well as get access to CWK Pour Over, our exclusive podcast not heard anywhere else. There are also t-shirts, coffee mugs, and so much more, but most importantly, 10% of your Patreon contributions goes directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. A big thank you to our special guest, Jeffrey Brown, author and illustrator, for joining us today. Don't forget his incredible book is coming out, Ray and Pals. It's going to come out in a couple of days from the release of this podcast. You won't want to miss it. And if you go to our website, coffeewithkenobi.com, we've got an incredible giveaway thanks to Chronicle Books. And we are giving you the book Ray and Pals, a Ray and Pals flexi journal, Ray and Pals postcards, and the Darth Vader and Sun 2020 calendar. This is an incredible, incredible giveaway. It's a $49.84 value. You can go to the links on social media and you'll get to our raffle copter page where you can complete entries and get a chance to win. Now, let me tell you how you can be entered. You follow us on Twitter, you get one entry. Follow us on Instagram, you get two entries. Follow us on Facebook, you get one entry. Follow Chronicle Books on Facebook, you'll get an entry. If you leave a review of Coffee with Kenobi on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, you'll get three entries. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel on Coffee with Kenobi, you will get two entries. So you get a maximum of 10 total entries. It is awesome. It's a great way for you to support our show and get access to a free collection of Jeffrey Brown's amazing work. Be sure to check that out today. The contest runs all the way until August 19th, 2019. So be sure to jump on and check that out today. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me each and every week for a cup of coffee. It truly is a wonderful thing to be able to share my love of Star Wars with each and every one of you. I can't thank you enough with school coming back up. I know how busy your schedules are, and I really, really appreciate it. This is my favorite mythology and fandom, and I can't think of better people to share with than all of you. We will be looking at our preview show of the D23 Expo. I'm so excited to share that with you and to get down there and experience that for the first time. It's going to be awesome, but it's going to be really awesome to share it with all of you. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is the podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Move along. Move along. Looking to catch up on the latest Star Wars books? Try listening to them on audio. Featuring sound effects and music directly from the movies, Star Wars audiobooks are the definitive listening experience. From brand new audiobooks such as Thrawn Treason and the audiobook exclusive Dooku Jedi Lost to our blockbuster movie tie-in editions, you'll have plenty to keep you entertained. Start listening wherever audiobooks are sold.